Hi there. All right, so starting off in a sitting position. Sit on your bolster. You can grab a pillow or a blanket. I'm gonna cross lay one ankle in front of the other, or you can also sit on a chair if you like. This is up to you. So cross ankled, comfortable. Cross ankled is the Indian pose, Sukhasana, easy pose. As long as your knees are a little down from your hips. And then palms either placed on your lap, palms up. If you want to release the energy, if you want to ground down, you can actually place the palms downward. You have your thumb and pointer finger touching. Well, the Janyanya, might be butchering it, but Janyanya uh, Mudra. It's just like a, a yoga pose for the hands. So you can place it downward and it helps your uh, sattva, your, your consciousness connect with your intention. If you place it up, you're just releasing it, kind of brought in the chest, close those eyes, grounding down your sit bones, breathing through the nostrils, filling up those lungs clearly, exhaling, releasing your diaphragm, Settling in on your busy day. Lining your ears over your shoulders, shoulders over hips. Take that nice deep breath in. Hold it at the very top. Exhale out of the mouth. <sighs> Cleansing any excess energy. Rounding down and then here internally look toward your third eye. So looking, gazing at the point between the brow. And then here, form an intention for your practice. So the niyamas and yamas. Niyamas is the work we work on ourselves within. That could be ahimsa, nonviolence. Ashtaya, which is non-stealing. You got sattva, which is truth. Parigraha, which is non-hoarding. <laughs> Let me rewind because I actually have it here. So ahimsa is non-violent. Sattva, which is truth. Ashtaya, which is non-stealing. And then brahmicharya, which means restraint, self-restraint. And then you got apargaha, non-grasping or uh, non-hoarding. So reducing our possessions, like getting rid of excess clothes you don't need in the closet. So things you can think about, things you can actually work on internally, things you can work on your mat. And yamas, and actually that was yamas, niyamas, is saucha, which means cleanliness or cleaning the mind, cleaning the body, cleaning your interior house, cleaning your car. So those are things you can work on for a niyama. Santosha, which is contentment. So feeling content with where you're at on the mat. The third niyama is tapas, which is the fire in your belly. You're building up that motivation, that fire and heat you need to achieve for your goals. The fourth one is Svadhyaya, which is surrendering. That Svadhyaya is, actually, Svadhyaya is self-study and Svara Pranadara, Svara Pranadana is surrendering. So kind of mix them up sometimes. So closing those eyes, focusing on any of those intentions or just a little self-care, a little kindness to your body. So sealing that intention with your breath. So focusing there on the third eye, inhaling all the way to the top of the lungs. Keep holding, sip a little bit more air. And seal the mouth, keep holding. And then exhale out of the mouth. <sighs> I'm 
big breath. Kind of get a little, little head high, a little, little light in the head just to get that extra fresh air in and excess old unused residual carbon dioxide, unusual, unused CO2, a, <laughs> unused air out, unused oxygen out. So coming off your bolster, we're gonna come onto your back. So lying on your back, your feet apart, exhaling all the way down, bending those knees. You can drop the knees, keep the feet flexed, drop the knees all the way to your right. And you can have your arms out like cactus arms or arms out to the side. Now open up those hips slowly. Breathe into the psoas. You're, you might have very tight psoas, iliopsoas in your left hip. Because you're either sitting or driving or, you know, and uh, just reading over, pouring over things at your office table. So inhale the knees back up, exhale, drop your knees over to the left, keeping the feet flexed. Close those eyes. Slow your breath down. And then inhaling the knees back toward the center, taking that right ankle over the left thigh. Keep that feet flex. You can press your right knee. You can even pull your bottom heel a little closer to your glutes. So just breathe into the tightness of the hips. Close your eyes and then inhale the arms through. Grab the back of your left hammy or the left shin. Keep the feet flex. You can rock left and right. Pulling the knees in a little closer to your chest. You can even wrap that right arm over the top shin and interlace the fingers and keeping the feet flex, rocking left and right. And feel it in your right glute. This is Ekapada Rajaka Bhattasana prep pose. So it's prepping for Ekapada, one-legged. Eka is one, Pada is foot. Kopata is the pigeon. Raja is the king. So Raja, Kopata, Asana is the pose. Asana is the pose. And just breathing into the tightness of your glutes. And then here, unwinding, dropping your bottom heel, keeping that right heel on right foot, ankle over that left thigh, keeping the feet flex. Exhale, drop the knees over to the right again, just stretching out that psoas. You move that bottom heel or top heel around. You can have your arms out, close those eyes. Adding that little bit of weight. Open up that psoas. Taking that time to breathe and listen for that textured breath. The ujjayi breath, that victorious sound of the ocean. Oh, the victorious breath. Take that time to breathe slow, inhaling back up. And then here, crossing the ankles, scooting your hips slightly over to the right. And then exhale, dropping the knees for a little tiny twist. You're gonna grab a block nearby if you want. Place it underneath your knees if you need to. But here, just allow your right outer hip, your IT bands to stretch. Have your arms out. Since this is the end of the day, you're pretty much warmed up. Slow the breath down. And then inhaling back toward the center, unwinding those legs, straighten up the spine. You're gonna take the left ankle onto the right thigh, keep the feet flex. You can place that left hand on that left knee, pressing nice and gently. And inhale the arms through, grabbing the back of the right hamstring or the right shin, rocking left and right. Close those eyes, slow your breath down. Again, you can wrap that left hand over the right shin, keeping the feet flexed, just rocking left and right. Slow the breath down. Here you can un unwind those fingers, drop the heel, the bottom heel, and then exhale, drop the knees over to the left. 
Oh, expose those arms out to the side here. You can move that bottom heel, top heel around. Slow your breath. Close those eyes. Taking that time to breathe. Listen for that breath. Slow it down. Inhaling back toward the center. Now, crossing your legs, scooting your hips a little over to the left, and then exhale, drop the knees over to the right, twisting at the belly. Again, if you need a block, you can support your knees, you can use them. Try to ground the left shoulder if you like. And that nice IT band, the iliotibial and your tensor latte fascia. All that fat along that left outer hip. That's where we store our extra energy. So breathing here, let everything unwind. Taking that time, slow it down. And then getting that slowly inhaling back up, unwinding those legs, having that block nearby your hip, keeping the chin to the chest. We're going to place your palms beside the hips and inhale, lift the hips high, keeping the chin to the chest. You can interlace the fingers or you can walk the shoulders under and keep pressing in the feet to lift up the hips. This is your bridge pose, very active pose. You can go passive and supportive by grabbing the block and place it on the highest setting or the medium setting right here or the lowest setting right underneath your sacrum. So balancing here on, on your sacrum, you can extend those legs out, point them to the bottom of the corners of your mat and then breathe into your front body. Take that time to breathe and slow it down. And then here, we're going to balance. We're going to inhale, lift that knee, left knee, left foot up, rock and roll, wiggle those toes. And then exhale, swapping legs. Inhale that right knee, right foot up, rock and roll, wiggle those toes. You might notice that your left leg and thigh are actually engaged. So inhaling that left knee, left leg up, kind of balance here on the sacrum in this, this modified legs up the wall. And you can start kicking like a V, open up those hips, you can scissor kick like a blender. And then you can even just drop those legs down. Again, point the feet if you like to get a full front stretch. If that's your psoas, you got a lot of muscles in your, your legs. You don't get much stretching, especially for sitting in the opposite direction. Just a 90 degree angle. Now we're going to open up like a flower. And then when you're ready, placing the feet firmly into the mat, pressing firmly. We're going to inhale, lift the hips up, remove the block. Exhale one vertebrae at a time. Nice and slow and gentle. You're keeping the feet flexing again, again, windshield wiper. You your knees left and right go a little faster than what you did earlier. It's warming up those hips. It's a warm up those synovial joints. So inhaling the knees in toward your heart. You can rock left and right, massaging the side bodies. You're pulling the left leg down, pulling that right knee in toward the heart line. you rock and roll, wiggle the ankle, wiggle that, those toes. So it's good to get that full stretch of the, the back of your right glutes. Left hand on that left hip. And imagine standing on that left leg. Now, observing any tightness, close those eyes. Breathing into your belly. Feel for that belly breath with your left hand. 
Exhale, pull that right knee out to the right side. You can keep your feet flexed if you like, or you can wiggle those toes, but getting that full stretch of those abductors. You got the piriformis in there. You have quite a few muscles. So breathing here. We're gonna inhale and leg back toward the center. Reach for the belt. If you have no belt, you can use your peace fingers. Grab that big toe. Have a big micro bend on the top knee. And then we're gonna exhale, drop that leg like a door, swinging it over to the right. Now rotate your, right, your pinky toe down. You can grab a nearby block. You can extend that left arm out to the side. We'll close your eyes. And then slow your breath down. Rotating that right pinky toe down, open up those abductors. But imagine standing on that left leg. Trying to balance here along, growing tall along your spine. Feeling strong like a tree. Moving all the way down to your belly button. All the way down, past the feet. Imagine that. Those long, deep, catch your breath, one more. And then slowly inhale that leg back up to the sky. Now swapping hands on that leg with the belt or grabbing that other toe with the other hand. You can bend that bottom knee, scoot your hips slightly over to the right and then extend that leg back out. Taking that right arm out to the side, just extend it. We're gonna exhale, drop that right leg over to the left and do that gentle twist again. So you're twisting across the belly. Again, if you need a block nearby to support your foot, you can self-adjust. Try to ground that right shoulder if you like. And imagine standing on that left foot. And we're building up to these postures where you can eventually stand up. So this is called Sutta Prangusvasana. Supta means supine, so we're being supported by the ground. Pudang Gustasana is big toe hold. So we're holding our big toe. Imagine that. Either with a belt or with our fingers or peace fingers. And we're getting nice and tall on the spine. Imagine we're standing on that left leg. Take that time, breathe slow. And then slowly inhale that leg up through the sky. Release the belt, lay the leg side by side, straighten up the spine, palm facing up. Close those eyes. Now observing the energy, the subtle body energy, difference of your right leg versus left. Now pull your heels together. Rub your toes, see and observe, is one leg longer than the other? It's always like a micro inch off. One feel a little bit more like Gumby. And then blink your eyes open. Inhale that left knee in toward your heart. Rock and roll, wiggle those toes. Right hand on that belly, feel for that belly breath. Close those eyes. Imagine standing on your right foot. And exhale, pull that left knee out to the left side like a little low squat. Which you call a power stance. So imagine stepping your left foot on a big rock. Showing off your power stance. But don't forget to breathe. Always feel for that breath. You can. Nice and slow. Don't close your eyes, just relax. Feel for that nice deep breath. Let's slowly inhaling back toward the center. Now reaching for that belt. Place it on the sole of your left foot or you can grab your big toe with the peace fingers. I'm gonna kick out that leg. I'm gonna exhale, drop that leg, swing like a porch door over to the left. You're grounding your hip, right hand on that right hip or you can extend it out. So you're grounding your shoulder. And look through your left pinky, make sure you're rotating it downward. So close those eyes. Breathe across the heart space, building up that space with breath. 
Breathe all the way down as if you're trying to breathe all the way down past your feet. Imagine standing on that right foot. Imagine balancing here, making sure you have a strong tall spine. Slow your breath down. Take that time to breathe slow. And then slowly inhaling that leg back up to the sky, swapping hands on the belt. You can do a micro bend on that bottom knee and you can scoot your hips slightly over to the left and straighten out that leg again. You're gonna exhale, drop that left hand out to the side and then swing that top leg over to the right. You're trying to ground that, that left shoulder if possible. If not, you can just relax. Imagine standing on that right leg, twisting across the belly. Getting the IT band stretch, Leo Tibio with a tensor latte fasce. Breathing here slow. You have no idea, like just like the frog legs, you're just breathing in oxygen, stretching it out like Gumby. We're walking on our legs all day, it's always gonna get a little tighter, even from running. Getting that nice, deep range of motion. It's a matter of getting oxygen into those tight muscles. Slowly inhale, that leg back up to the sky, release the belt, straighten up the spine, palms facing up. Let the feet flop out, come into that Shavasana. Observe any subtle body energy. Difference between left leg versus right. Feel it vibrating more. And observing, pulling the heels in, again, rubbing the feet. Now are your heels equally long? Are your, both your legs pulled out? I, I can tell the difference. The before and after is always cool. Now blink your eyes, inhale the arms up to the sky, and then exhale, hands over the head here. Point the toes. Keep reaching and keep stretching, yawning. And then you can pull your left wrist, exhale, pull it over to the right corner of your mat, so right side. So you're doing a half moon pose, half banana asana, they call it. And if you want a full stretch, you can walk your heels over to the right bottom corner of the mat, so you're getting a full banana. You can stack your ankles if you want a little bit, bit deeper. Breathing here, slow. And then walk your heels back, inhaling, lengthening through the spine. And you can point the toes, gonna stretch and reach for the very, very top. And then grabbing that right wrist with an exhale, pull it over to the left corner, top corner. And walk the bottom heels down to that bottom left corner. You can stack your ankles as well. Breathe along your right side. All right, banana asana. That time, slowly inhaling back, straightening the spine, walking the heels back. We're gonna inhale the knees back in. Rock left and right like a boiled egg, drawing big circles, grabbing the knees, drawing big circles, massage that lower lumbar. And then exhale, circle the opposite way. And then when you're done, we're gonna rock and roll up and down the spine, keeping the chin to the chest. So we're gonna roll up into a seated position. You get a little stretching with the, the neck. So hands on the knees, you can do slow, big circles with your head. So you don't know, <coughs> excuse me. You might have very tight neck from just the rest of the day, You're just carrying the load or stressful day, who knows. We're just gonna roll it out. You grab some water. Ah. Dry through. 
and allergies here and there. <coughs> so rolling the neck. And then exhale, roll with the other side. Nice big circles, nice and slow, like you're screwing on your head. And then coming back to neutral spine, taking their right hand, pulling your left temple. Close those eyes. Breathe into your neck. You can take that left hand, point it down toward the ground. You can get a different stretch. You move your hand, top hand around the left side of your head. See if you can get a different stretch. And then take that left hand and wrap it behind the back. Breathing here. And then unwinding. Taking that left hand, place it on your right temple. You can rest your right hand on that right knee. Close those eyes. You don't feel a stretch, just move your, your left hand, the top hand around your head until you feel a nice gentle stretch along the neck. And here you can take that bottom hand and point it toward the ground. Close those eyes. Slow the breath down. Here you can take that bottom hand, wrap it behind the back. Close the eyes. And then unwinding. So now that we are all kind of straight, straightened out with the neck, you can do little gentle, small circles with the head and then circling the opposite way. So you can feel it on top of the atlas. I'm gonna take your, your hands out, press the palms, and I'm gonna flex them down. So a little wrist stretch, flex them down, and then we're gonna, we're gonna place the palms up, and then exhale, bending those elbows, make them touch your shoulder, and then inhaling it back out. So you're gonna work on your shoulders, balancing here, exhale, pull it in, and then inhale out, exhale in. So you feel all that energy getting hotter. Now we're gonna take the elbows and make them touch. You're gonna inhale out, pull it back. Exhale, pulling in, in, and uh, inhale out. Exhale in, and then unwrap those hands. We're gonna inhale those, those arms out to the sides. Now we're gonna place the palms down, looking down. Looking left and then looking right. So inhaling left and then exhaling right. Now flip the palms up, inhaling left and then exhaling right. And then hands back onto your shoulders and then tiny, tiny circles swimming backwards. Now lubricating the shoulders and then swimming forward. Then you're taking that right hand up to the sky, dropping that left hand over to the left side, and then exhale that top hand over the ears, having a nice side stretch. And then inhaling back up, taking that right hand again. <laughs> We're gonna bend that elbow. We're gonna stretch out your shoulders. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies, I just sweat. <laughs> so it's getting dusty in there. So taking that right elbow right behind, take that left hand. You can look down. And getting that full stretch of your neck even. And then slowly, slowly, gently look up just to the middle of the room and maybe look up toward the sky. Getting that full stretch of your shoulders. Now unwinding across, across the opposite way. Inhale, left hand up to the sky. Exhale, drop that right hand over to the side and then exhale, take that top hand over the ears, turn the heart up. Breathe in and reach. You go a little deeper if you can. Get that full side stretch and then slowly inhaling up. Taking that left elbow, bending it, putting it behind your head. I'm gonna take that right hand and try to pull the elbow slightly, gently looking down. And a shoulder stretch. Breathing here slowly, inhaling, 
looking to the middle of the room and slowly inhaling, looking toward the sky and then releasing. Now pulling the flesh out from the backside. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reach. Look toward the thumbs, relax the throat, inhale, reach higher. And then exhale, dropping the hands down in front, inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk the hands out, bowing down, hinge at the hips. So it's not how deep you go, it's all about breathing in to elongate the crown and exhale, walk those fingers out, hinge at the hips. So breathe into the back. Close your eyes, internally gaze. No one has your posture, so you, have, you, you can just imagine how you are. So breathe in, follow your breath. Exhale, walk out those hands. Again, breathe into the back and keep exhaling, walk those fingers out. And then when you're breathing and lengthening, reaching, we're gonna exhale, walk the hands slightly over to the left, grab that left hand with the right. Breathe into your right lung, get the full side stretched in. And then slowly inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, reaching. Exhale, walk the hands gently over to your right side. And then grab that right hand with the left, breathe into your left lung. And slowly, slowly inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, pressing back up. Uncross, cross the opposite way, equal and opposite. Pull the flesh out from the back. Ground down in the sit bones. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching, look toward the thumbs. Inhale, lengthening through those fingers, keep reaching, relax the throat. I'm gonna exhale, hands down. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk those hands out, hinge at the hips. Close those eyes, breathe into the back. Every inhalation, come out just slightly. Exhale, walk those fingers out some more. So follow your breath. Slow your breath down. Keep reaching, keep breathing. So inhaling to lengthen, and we're gonna exhale, walk the hands gently over to your left, grab that left hand with the right. So you're getting a full side stretch on your right armpit. Inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, lengthening, reaching. I'm gonna exhale, walk the hands all the way to your far right, grab that right hand with the left. Again, breathe into your left arm. Slowly, slowly inhaling, pressing back toward the center. Now take your feet together, wrapping those fingers around the top of your toes, pulling the heel in. You can walk, you can straddle your sit bones so that you're sitting nice and tall. You can even wiggle those knees, warm up those hips. Feeling a bit more flexible on the hips, huh? So inhale nice and tall. We're gonna exhale, bow down. So inhale, lengthening through the crown. I'm gonna exhale, go a little deeper. Let the knees drop, close those eyes. Breathe into the back. Slow the breath down. Allow your heart to drop if there's an invitation. Close those eyes and keep breathing. Allow gravity to invite you down. Slow the breath. Eventually you might smell your toes. See how clean they are. And then slowly, slowly inhaling up. You might also notice you might need a pedicure. All right, we're gonna massage your feet. Actually, we're gonna open up your feet. We're gonna take, shove the, the thumbs into the inner soles of your feet, wrap the tops of your feet with your fingers, and we're gonna exhale, press your inner elbows into the, the inside of your thighs. You're gonna rotate your, your lateral edge of your feet to open up the pata, the feet, the soles of the feet up toward your toward the ceiling, so you're opening it like a book. So if you've been gardening, your feet might be a little dirty. So squishing the toes, squishing the big toes, you're gonna massage the feet. So massaging and twisting the second toe, the middle toe, the ring toe and the pinky, and then now go for the second knuckle. 
just going backwards, going up to the middle, to the second, and then the, the secondary, the phalanges of the big toe. And then we're gonna squish with your big, big thumbs, rotate in a circular manner, the top of your feet, the ball of your feet, that would be the lung, no, yeah, it'll be the lungs. Physiologically, I'm thinking, hmm, anatomy. All right, so the center, a little between the lungs, would be the heart. So you're going to squish the center, and then either side, either side of that heart would be the pancreas and the liver. And a little below, imagine there's a spine. There isn't one, but I was, whenever I explained about surfboards, it's like, okay, there's a center, it's a spine, so it's just internal, we can't see it. But that's the strongest part. So imagine the the middle of our feet is the strongest part. So you're just gonna massage it down in either side. A little below are the kidneys. Getting that nice little tension in our arches. Kind of stretched out. And then down, down, down the center. Big, big circles. And Qigong, the spring of life. So you got the GI tract. And then all the way down, 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 and around the knees, kind of give it nice circles around the heels. And then big circles around the big part of the heel. That would be the feet of your feet. And then inhaling back up nice and tall. Make the feet out like a diamond. So feet together. And pull the flesh out from the back side. Inhale, arms up, reach for the stars. We're gonna exhale, bow down, hands on either on the ground or wrap the toes. You can inhale through the crown and exhale, relax. And bow down, let the knees drop. Your neck allows you to drop your chin to the chest and you can rock your ears left and right as your bowling ball in the head is like 10 to 15 pounds and if your head is always hunched forward you might get a headache migraines and all that so you want to let loose if your ears are never above your shoulders now you're going to be more attentive to that and you cause a little neck strain so just release and Inhaling back up. Now take the feet out in front. Flexing the feet. Now pull the flesh out from the backside. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. You're gonna look toward the, the palms, you're gonna flatten the palms, you're gonna pull, you're gonna look forward, you're gonna pull the elbows past their ears and press through the palms, press through your feet. You're actually lengthening through the crown. It's like you're a downward dog, you're pressing through those palms. And exhale. Four, fold. You can bend your knees. You can lay your belly on your lap. So four, fold down. You're breathing into your back. You can bend those knees slightly just because your hips, your, your hamstrings might be a little tight. We're coming into Paschimottanasana, Western side stretch, Pashi pose. Inhale through the crown, go a little deeper. Exhale. Breathe into the back. We only have one back, so we gotta take good care of it. And then slowly, slowly, inhaling up. Up to pulling your right foot into the left inner thigh. Pull the flesh out, it's my favorite poses, very juicy for the legs. Inhale, arms up, reach for the stars. We're gonna exhale, four fold. You can grab your big toe, little toe. Inhale through the crown. And then exhale, bowing down. If you need a belt nearby, you can go grab one as well, or you can just grab your ankle. But this is called Johnny Shirshasana, where the knee goes to the head or forehead, or forehead goes toward the knee. You can even grab beyond if you want to grab your wrist beyond your foot. With a full back stretch. With a full hamstring stretch here, too. Slow the breath down. Listen for that ujjayi, that extra breath. Slowly, slowly, inhaling up. Now take that left leg out to the side. Pulling that heel in, that right heel in toward the groin. We're gonna point the left toes up. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. We're gonna exhale, drop your left elbow in front of that left knee. Top hand over the ears and then turn the heart up. Inhale to reach, exhale, go a little deeper, try to reach the opposite toes. So in due time, everyone's built differently. You're gonna inhale, reach and exhale, go a little deeper. 
job. Inhaling back up. Now taking that right leg, that right heel out. You can sit on your mat. You can even support your heels on the corners of your mat. Pulling the flesh out, pointing the toes up. We're gonna go into that Upavista Konasana. So uh, it's a forward fold, but seated forward fold. And inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. Exhale, hands out in front, inhale through the crown, keep the toes pointed up. Exhale, walk those hands out, bowing down. So hinge at the hips. You might not hinge at the hips if you haven't been practicing a lot, but if you haven't, inhale through the crown, keep those toes pointed up. Exhale, keep walking those fingers out some more. So follow your breath and close your eyes. Breathe into the back. Exhale, keep reaching the fingers out. Bowing down, keeping the toes pointed up. Slow your breath down. Taking your time to breathe. Keep those toes pointed up. And slowly, slowly inhaling up. Good job. Now pulling your left heel in into the gray. Keeping your, toe, your right toes pointed up. And then inhale that left arm up to the sky. Exhale, drop that right elbow in front of that right knee. Take that top hand over the ear. And then turn the heart up, keep reaching, keep breathing. Exhale, go a little deeper. So eventually the, the top hand might reach those right toes, but keep the heart turned up. You might notice one side might be a little stretchier than the other. That's all right, that's why we give equal time, equal access. Keep breathing and reaching. Get more extension, more range of motion. You can just notice and observe, make mental notation of the differences. And then slowly, slowly inhaling up. Ooh, now take that right leg in front, squishing that left heel into that left, the right inner thigh. Pull the flesh out from the back side. All right, ground down the sit bones. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reach. We're gonna exhale, grab your big toe, little toe. Inhale through the crown. And then exhale, bow down. If you need a belt, grab the belt. If you need to grab your ankle, you can grab the ankle. If you wanna go beyond, grab the foot beyond, or the wrist beyond the foot. And then bow down over that right knee. All right, Janu Shirshakna knee is Janu Shirshakna's head pose. Every time, every time you do a Shirshakna, it's actually a headstand. So breathing into the back. Slow the breath down. Slow, slowly. Inhaling up, good job. Now cross your ankles. You're gonna come into your hands and knees. And here, you're gonna drop your elbows down and drop down, pull back into Balasana Child's Pose. You need a rest here. It's a nice resting that you can grab a block even to support your skull, your forehead. And pull the hands beside the, the heels, relax the shoulders. You need your knees wide because you ate, I don't know, not too long ago. You can do that. If you want a bigger stretch for your neck, you can pull the heels together and then rest back down on the block or you can pull the block away. You can even sit on the block if you need to. Connect your sit bones to your heels. And here, just relax the shoulders. And then breathe into the back. Slow your breath down. If you need a little bit more neck space, you can pull your forehead away from your knees. Get some space for your breath. So listening for the breath. If you can count the seconds of your breath. Breathing in all the in. Hold it gently at the very, very top. And then exhale just as slowly. And then hold it at the very bottom, just as gently. Okay, increase it one extra second. So if you're doing two to three seconds, try three to four. If you're only doing three to four, try four to five, and five to six, keep going up. Just 
slow it down. Repeat cramp, I'm gonna tuck or untuck the toes. The hips, cramp, do all the same, just come in and out of the pose. Slow it down. This is a very nice rest and pose, especially for the rest and digest. If we're in flight or fight all day, you never get to relax. You never get to digest your food. You never get to sleep. You never rest. You want to strengthen your neck. You want to ever carry like a surfboard on top of your head. <laughs> this is a good way to strengthen your neck. If you have neck issues or brain injuries or whatnot, you can skip out. If you want to give it a try, you're going to do rabbit pose. You're going to inhale, roll onto the top of the crown. You can have your hands beside your ears. And then push up hands. You're going to walk the knees underneath the hips. They're just gently on the top of your crown. If this is enough, with the support of your hands, you can stay there. If you want to challenge yourself, you can inhale that right hand up to the sky. You can exhale, swap hands. You can inhale that left hand up to the sky. If you want to balance, you can lift both the hands up to the sky. You can even interlace the fingers behind the back, squeeze the palms, and pull the wrists forward to get them to the shoulders. Coming into rabbit pose. So just breathing into your shoulders, breathe into the back if you're able to. And release the palms, palms back down onto the side of the ears, and then kind of roll back down onto your forehead, coming into Balasana, child pose. There's a lot of pressure on the top of the crown. Anytime you do headstand, they, they say it's the queen of all poses, and you do handstand, that's the king of all poses, that's a lot. <laughs> so taking the hands out in front, reaching, and then exhale, walk the hands gently over to your left, lay your belly on that left lap if possible, grab that left hand with the right. And then slow your breath down. And then keep reaching, keep breathing. We're gonna exhale, walk the hand all the way to your far right. Grab that right hand with the left, breathing into your left long knee, lay your belly on that right lap. And inhaling back toward the center, reaching to the top of the mat. We're going to drop your elbows, drop your forehead on the ground. You can relax. You can pull your sit bones back. Coming into puppy pose, you can relax on your chin even. Allow your heart to melt. Breathing into your tight shoulders here. And then here you can take your hands together. Namaste and pull it behind the skull. Get an extra armpit stretch. Walk and use block and then into your elbows too. Go a little deeper. Take more time to pull back the sit bones, breathe into the back. And releasing down. Release down onto your belly button. Always good to come into the sinks every day. Just for sciatica, in case you have herniated discs, because we're always lifting bent force or your Put in your disc into a jelly donut, so you're kind of doing an opposite. You're going to squish it back the other way. So lifting through the crown. Or you can shake your tailbone or, and spread those fingers. Spreading the fingers helps distract the lower back, right? And then inhale, chin up to the sky. And then exhale, drop your chin to the chest. Inhaling back to neutral spine. And then <laughs> Might as well actually drop your chin to the chest, rock your ears left and right. Get that bowling ball of the head, kind of relax. Inhale back to neutral spine, we're getting into the shoulders, left arm across. Inhale, right arm up to the sky, breathe here. Exhale, weave it underneath your left arm. So walk in that left hand to the right here, relax your left cheek on that left shoulder bicep or the crook of your arm. Close those eyes. Allow the heart to melt. So it would be nice to feel this. Nice little releasing, swadhyaya, almost surrendering, self study. Swadhyaya dana, that's a full surrendering practice. Closing your eyes, you're self studying your mind. Okay, 
grab your arm around. Make yourself a generous hug. Tighten up that hug and give yourself a pat on the back. Getting on the mat today. Big accomplishment. And then here, unwinding, inhaling back to, to Sphinx pose. Elbows back underneath, spread those fingers. Here, shake the pelvis, look through the crown. And look forward. Spread those fingers to help release the glutes. Turning left and right. Now right arm across, left arm up to the sky, breathe in. And then exhale, weave it underneath your right armpit, walking your right hand to the left. And then here again, resting your cheek, maybe on the ch your chin on the top bicep, or maybe the crook of the arm, close those eyes. Slow your breath down, breathe all the way down to your tailbone. To surrender into your arms, into the universe. Let the universe support you. Here, wrap yourself around. Give yourself a generous hug. Tighten it up. Squeeze, and then a pat on the back. Self with love, a little self care, a little hug for yourself is what you deserve. And then unwind, inhaling back up into the sink. And then here, you can tuck the toes. We're going to inhale, lift up the belly button. Kind of do that little core, spreading those fingers, tucking the toes, engage the core. And so every time you build up your, your core, you actually strengthen your muscles. And then untuck, tuck the tailbone, untuck. Tuck the tailbone and then walking the feet up. You're dropping the head down toward the ground. You can look toward your toes and shake your head. This is dolphin pose. This is almost like downward dog. You can shake your head and nod. This is always an option if you can't do downward dog with your wrists. But if you can, pressing into your palms, you're all of a sudden into downward dog. Here, spread those fingers, palms as wide as the hips, or wide as the shoulders, sorry. Feet as wide as the hips, if not wider. You can take the full length of the mat. You can grab the side of the mat if you, uh, if you feel like you're slippery. You're pedaling away the heels, getting into your calves. You can sway your hips left and right. Shake your head if you want. Loosen the neck. All right, now here, look between the thumbs. We're gonna walk up, skip up, or jump up into a four fold. Bend your knees, lay the belly on the lap, grab your elbows, let your head dangle. Shake your head, sway left and right ragdoll. So you're actually growing your lower lumbar and you're actually stretching out that, that hamstring because it's all connected to your lower back. You're stretching out the glutes too. Kind of balancing everything in this inversion pose. Anytime your heart is above your head, it's an inversion. Good for anxiety, for depression, Getting a full uh, blood rush to your brain. And then release the palms. Inhale halfway up. So the blood rushes back to your brain. So hands either on your shins or knees. Engage your core. Pull your shoulders away from the ears. Have a flat back. You're using the spinal muscles. Exhale, forward fold. Uttanasana all the way back down. And then slowly inhaling up. Hands to the sky. Then exhale, hands to the heart. Now lift those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat, rolling the shoulders back. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, tucking the tailbone, engage the core. And then making sure your feet are nice and grippy. Lift those toes and plant them firmly into the mat again. And blink your eyes open. Now lean over to your right foot. So inhale that left knee up in space. You can grab your left knee. You can rock and roll, rock and roll, wiggle those toes, right hand on that right hip. Focus on a point in front of you that's not moving, a dristy, a balancing point here. I'm gonna exhale, pull that left knee out to the side. I'm gonna face you guys. So you're gonna pull that left knee out to the left side. You're shifting your hips. If you fall out, you can fall back in. And then inhaling back and then release. Job. So a lot of strengthening on your ankles. Hands to the heart, lift those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat. You're gonna lean over to your left side. 
Inhale that right knee up in space. Grab that right knee, left hand on that left hip. Rock and roll, wiggle those toes. Good job. So focus on a point in front of you that's not moving. We're gonna exhale, pull that right knee out to the side. So you might be shifting your hips over, but you're balancing on your very strong ankles. If you fall out, you can fall back in. And then inhaling back toward the center. All right, now release. Now grabbing your, grabbing your belt, just like you were doing it on the ground. You can even use a wall if you need to. So you're gonna balance here. You're gonna, you know, plant. You know, lift those toes, plant them firmly into the ground. So, let's draw up on the right leg. So inhaling, shifting your hips over to the left. You can bend the right knee, grab that right knee. Left hand on that left hip. So again, focus on that point. And then instead of wiggling your toes, you can place the belt on the hook of your foot and bend that right knee. And then now straighten out that leg. So you're gonna focus here. You can always have a micro bend on your knee too. Focus here, pressing that right leg out in front of you. I'm gonna exhale, swing it over to the right side. So you might shift your hips and then swing it back forward. So this is all balancing on your ankles. Challenge. You can always revert back to just grabbing your knee and back. All right, good job. You're gonna even shake it out. Shake out those legs. All right, now coming back into Samas Tihi. Tuck the tailbone, roll the shoulders back, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, engage the core, tucking the tailbone. Going tall and sturdy in this equal standing pose. It's like Tadasana, like a mountain pose. Put the hands out in front <laughs> instead. All right, so we're gonna lean over to your right foot. Inhale, grab your left knee, right hand on that right hip. You're gonna keep wiggling those toes and ankles and then you're gonna hook that left foot with that belt. So focus on a point. If you fall out, you can fall back in and then kick out that leg. So imagine grabbing your big toe and doing this. We're gonna exhale, swing it out to the left side. You can have that micro bend on that left knee if you need to. And then keep balancing. You might shift your hips over to the right. And stronger, inhaling back forward and then release. Woohoo! Good job. So. We're putting a lot of pressure on their hips because you're getting stronger and building up the, those muscles. All right, hands to the heart, lift those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat. Now we're gonna lean over to your left foot, inhale that right knee up in space, grab that right knee, walk that right hand down to that right ankle, you know, place it in that foot into the inner thigh above the knee or below the knee. Never on the knee joint because you don't want to you don't want to uh, stress it, or you can even kickstand it on the very bottom of your ankle. What you're doing is rotating that right outer hip, pressing firmly into your standing leg, hands to the heart. Breathe here, and then slowly inhale, hands above your head like an Egyptian. Focus on a point in front of you that's not moving. You can open up the palms, so that's exploding volcano. And you can start waving the palms. Sometimes you have better balance. Your inner uh, cerebellum, your, ah, your inner movement might be a little better. And then releasing so inside your ear, your middle ear. All right, shake it out again. Shake out your head even. And then coming back and see that samas tihihi, that equal standing pose. Lift those toes, plant them firmly into the mat, tuck the tailbone, engage the core. You can roll the shoulders back, ears over shoulder. So it's always foundation. Foundation first and kind of rises up to the top. You're going to lean over to your right leg and then inhale that left knee into your left hand. Rock and roll, wiggle those toes. We're going to draw your left hand to the left ankle and then place that inner foot, that left inner foot into the inner thigh above the knee or below the calf or kickstand it, whichever is the best for you. Everyone's different. Everyone's at different levels too. So kind of rising through the crown, press the palms together, namaste. And then you can slowly rise it above your head like an Egyptian. And then here you wave the palms around, the waving palm pose. 
job. And then releasing everything, kind of shake it out. Shake it out there. Good job. Now have your, have your hands together, feet apart. Hands on the hips. Inhale, chin up. Exhale, forward fold. Grab your ankles. You can shake your head, nod. You can pull your head closer toward the ground. Prasamita Konasana. And then here we're going to interlace the fingers. So opposite interlace the fingers. If your left thumb was over the right, try your right thumb over the left. Squeeze the palms and then pull the wrist forward. Shake your head and nod. See if you feel anything loose. And then being your own chiropractor. And then here release the palms. Hands to the ground. Inhale halfway up. You can walk the palms out in front a little. And then pull your sit bones back. So this is your short dog pose. Again, the full stretch of your upper torso. Your, your lower back too. So shake your head, nod. Good job. Now walking the hands back onto your hips. Bend those knees slowly. Inhaling up. Good job. Now walk your feet a little closer to each other. Hands to the heart. And exhale. Squat down. So bend those knees. Let the tailbone drop. You can grab a block nearby you can sit on. And flatten out the, the feet if you want. Or you can remove the block. Up to you can dynamically move left and right. And having the little elbows open up those knees. That opens up those hips. Drop the tailbone. You can have both hands out, just the rock ears, left and right. You can inhale that right arm up to the sky, twisting the body. Open up those shoulders, exhale, drop that right hand down. Inhale, left hand up, breathing in, exhaling down. There's always this, this bind where you inhale that right hand behind the back, left hand in front of that knee, kind of wrap around. You can also grab a belt to, to kind of, um, Fix that bind together. It opens up the shoulders. Again, you can release. Inhale, right arm. Exhale, back down. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, weave it behind your back. You can take that belt and close that bind. Turn the heart. It opens up those shoulders. And then releasing, dropping onto your tailbone. Again. Relaxing here, grabbing the back of the hamstrings. You can also grab your, your mat to the local real estate on the wall. You can grab your blanket nearby. And get ready for Shavasana already. Time flies. And grab a bolster for your knees. And grab the back of your hamstring. And then exhale slowly back down, one vertebrae at a time. And here you can sprawl your legs out. Palms facing up. Allow those eyeballs to close, those eyelids to close over those eyeballs. Let those eyeballs sink into the eye sockets. Relax everything. Relax your shoulders. Relax your jaw. You can move your jaw around and just let it go slack. Relax the tongue. Relax everything in your face. Relax your ears, relax your throat. Slow your breath down. Now imagine your heart strings relax. Imagine your heart dropping. And breathe into your lungs as if you were part of the floor. Relaxing every visceral organ in your belly. And your pelvic floor relax. Relaxing your glutes, back of your calves. The back of your knees relax. Let your heels get heavier. And 
All the noise within and let it float away like clouds. Any thoughts within the mind, let it float away. Breathe in as if you know you're breathing in. And breathe out knowing that you're breathing out. Um, yourself into that sensation of breathing. And that time, slow your breath down. There's a further stage, spiritual intelligence, which is true wisdom. Sounds only when discrimination ends. Wisdom does not function in duality, perceives only oneness. It does not discard the wrong, it sees and feels only the right. When we are buying a house, we need to use a logical discriminating intelligence. A politician, however high, high his motives, must choose and decide in the relative and temporal world. Spiritual wisdom, on the other hand, does not decide, it knows. It is entirely present and so is free of time. As we shall see as we move inward closer to the soul, in the moment we must be content see the sky clearly and say, that is blue when the sun shines. Incidentally, science tells us the atmosphere is colorless like water. Sensory perception may be flawed, but at least clear, healthy senses will show us a wonderful variety of color in the sky or in the waters of rivers and lakes. This knowledge is not perfect, but it is valid and provides a reasonable foundation a good nervous system will make our, our actions swift and sure. Healthy bodies give strength to act. Unclouded minds give stability and relief from emotional upheavals. Awakening of intelligence will help us to choose, decide, and initiate action. What we are witnessing is a coming together integration of the sheets of being that we are exploring. That they are, they can act in harmony and from a source that is moving ever closer to the core. What I'm describing here is a journey from the chattering brain to clean instinct, to reach the clarity of intuition. When you start yoga, you probably are living in your mind and emotions, a never ending internet chat room. You read books and articles on what to eat and how to exercise, read materials, that any wild animal would scorn. But you do not know how to live, only what you desire. Instinct is gold. What asana and pranayama practice. First, we move outward from the mind and cleanse the body, senses, and organs. Instinct is revitalized. The newly awoken intelligence of the body moves in and tells you automatically what food is good for you when and how much to eat, when and how to exercise, when to rest or sleep. People forget that in our quest for the soul, we first reclaim the pristine joys of the animal kingdoms, health and instinct, vibrant and alive. At the same time, we're transforming instinct into intuition. Intelligence cuts its teeth on analysis and synthesis, reason and judgment deduction becomes muscular and gradually the higher intelligence of intuition begins to dawn like the light in the, the sky before sunrise instinct is an unconscious intelligence the cell surfacing 
Intuition is supra-conscious. Knowing in which you know before you know how you know. When I was young, I used to travel by train from Pune to Bombay every weekend to teach. The train I took was a rare race special for the horse race meeting in Bombay. Crowded together, all the race goers assumed I was off to the races too. I got tired of explaining otherwise, and often passengers would ask me what I thought of a particular race, offering me a list of runners. Quickly, I would name a horse. It was astonishing how many returning punters would approach me and say, you know that horse you picked one? It was probably chance, but I give the example lightheartedly to show that this is how intuition dawns. Little things turn out to be spontaneously correct. We find ourselves putting round pegs into round holes and square pegs in square ones. We're mentally less clumsy, more adroit. Sustained misperception and wrong knowledge leads to life of trying to hammer square pegs into round holes or in racing terms, picking losers. If you persist in hammering, it can lead to disastrous results for you and for others. Confusion, mixing things up, and mistaking one for another is the opposite of discrimination. This conception creates a distortion of reality. That in turn generates wrong feelings and taints the consciousness. By culturing intelligence and learning from mistakes, we weed out what is wrong. Any gardener will tell you that weeds grow back. But at least they are easier to dig up if we catch them before they are fully grown. We have now discussed how to develop our individual intelligence in our lives. As we move further forward through the intellectual sheath, this intelligence is cultivated into wisdom. Here we will see the importance that concentration and meditation play in culturing the mind by moving our ever away from the, mis from the un understandable but often childish promptings of ego. We turn our source of knowing from our brains to our hearts and from our minds to our souls. Just as our souls are part of the universal soul, we have also seen that our intelligence is part of the universal intelligence. As we learn to tune ourselves like an antenna to the natural intelligence around us, we gain not just clarity of thought, also wisdom in life. You're able to develop ever greater access to this wisdom. As we learn to develop right perception, we're also much more likely to perceive this wisdom as we learn to transform the dull, distracted, or oscillating mind into an attentive and restrained yogic mind. Ready, you can wiggle your toes, wiggle those fingers. Keep your eyes closed and shake your head left and right. So when you're ready, you can inhale the knees toward your heart and rock left and right like a boiled egg. When you're ready, you can fall to your favorite side and pull your face. And take two deep breaths. Take your time. When you're ready, you can press up into a seated position. And then inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. Hands together. Exhale, hands to the heart. The light in me sees the light in you. That's what namaste means. Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mahalo. Mm -hmm.